Audrey Essery, and today I'm going to show you how I use negative space to design in my quilts. Let's start first with this quilt as an example. Quilters use negative space to design for many reasons. Sometimes we just want to give the eye a place to rest in the quilt. Sometimes we use negative space to create a secondary design. And sometimes we're just using negative space to create visual interest. With quilters specifically, sometimes we like to give large areas of negative space so that we can introduce special quilting um, when we get to that stage of making a quilt. When I originally designed this quilt offset, the uh, digital design had two full rings of concentric circles with these alternating pieced wedges. When I was designing digitally, I found the design to be more compelling when I removed a quarter of each of the circles. I decided to offset those so that the design was balanced and still symmetrical diagonally, but it gave more visual interest when I removed those um, quarter circle arcs um, and just leaving um, these pieced wedges. This quilt, Indigo Radial, I'd used negative space in many ways. Um, I have this large circle in the center and I use that negative space to introduce these special rays of machine quilting. So what I did was quilted this using straight lines on my long arm and then I brought it to my domestic sit down machine and I stitched these radiating lines. I picked this point as the focal point for these lines and I brought it up to match the point where each of these wedges start. You can see there are more areas of negative space in each part of the quilt and this gives the eye a place to rest and it also allows the eye to continue to move around the quilt. This quilt, Solstice Radial, you can see that I have a full ring of the wedges this time, but I've used the negative space in two contrasting colors. So I've started to modify the background of the quilt and I use two different colors of thread in this big negative space area and that coincides with how the color changes with the color gradation here. This keeps the eye moving around and also creates visual interest in this area of open space. Similarly, this quilt, Obtuse Radial, I use the negative space within the circle and also in the background to include some additional special quilting. Um, this is a full ring of wedges. They are very skinny, and so I wanted the quilting to be more dense, which is why I introduced um, the stitching here. And you can see that each line comes up and meets a wedge here. This quilt, angular number one, uses negative space to create visual interest. I started to include the background color of white in with this design here. It creates a secondary design of this V-shaped arrow here, um, as well as I have chosen to include these skinny borders that are different widths. So while the eye moves around the quilt, you're still looking within this bordered area. And without the borders, it just seemed to kind of swallow this center design. So while you have all of this negative space with the straight line quilting, having these borders helps kind of tell your eye where to focus. This quilt uses negative space in a different way. This is the circle study pattern, and you can see that I've just chosen pieces of the quilt to match with the background fabric. Um, but what happens with the border is that you have colors in the center that are coming out to the binding, the wide binding here, and that keeps the eye moving around. 
I like that the negative space creates a secondary design with these circles and creates a slightly different shape. Um, and it also just keeps some visual interest. So you're not looking at nine full circles. You've got some circles that have portions that are omitted that fade into the background. This quilt, the abstract arcs pattern, I've chosen to use negative space in many ways. You can see that some of the circles are complete circles with color, and then we have areas of the circles where the background becomes the part that completes the circle. I've used inset strips to create visual interest, and there, in some instances where the strips are lighter, it gives the impression that you've got some of the background showing through or you have things layered on top. Let's look at some of the pattern pieces for the abstract arcs quilt and play with some blocks. With this pattern, you can see that from my paper templates, I've chosen to cut templates that are the background color and the color, the hue. So for each of the shapes, I have options that I can begin to play with. If we start to look at some of these blocks and lay these out, I can create a pretty traditional circle if I keep the solid fabric in the curved seam circle parts. And I can change out the colors to give a different appearance to the quilt. But then what if I took instead of having a colored quarter circle, what if instead I started to take what is the background color and start to put those in the design? Very quickly, you'll start to get another design that comes together. And what's really interesting is when the background pieces are colored, these start to create a secondary design as well. I like it when I turn the blocks and it looks like the circles are all kind of overlapping each other. So you have some circles that are on top and some that are going below. And I also like to vary the colors so that you don't have too much of one color in each area. So while this would be perfectly fine, I feel like it's more interesting visually to put a different color next to it. This pattern also emphasizes negative space because it has a very skinny strip on the side of each block. So you can see when these are put together, you're intentionally introducing a gap into the pattern. It actually makes it easier to piece together because you're not worrying about these two points of the curve coming together perfectly. And that's one of the things about this pattern that I really like is you get an illusion of a full circle even though there's a gap here. The nice thing about this pattern is that since it's a block, you can make this block as many times as you want and make the quilt as large as you want. I have one more quilt to share with you today. This is my quilt offset radial and it uses many of the things that I've talked about today related to designing with negative space. I have a large area that's open in the center here where I've used metallic gold thread to create 
and stitch radiating lines. Another thing is, when I designed this quilt, it was meant to be three full circles of wedges, but it was overpowering to the eye, and the eye needed a place to rest. And so I omitted the quarters of the quilt to make sure that the eye had a place to rest. I hope this inspires you to design with negative space.